Welcome to another edition of Hey DT. Hey DT is a series of videos I do where I respond to viewer questions and comments. These viewer questions and comments, they typically come from the videos posted on YouTube and Odyssey. Sometimes these questions and comments come through social media such as Reddit, Mastodon, and sometimes through email. And the very first question I want to respond to is, Hey DT, could you make a video taking a look at Hyperland? It's working pretty well these days, even on NVIDIA. So this is a question I get all the time. I have had this question asked to me probably thousands of times, and I'm not even kidding. Thousands of times over the last year, maybe year and a half. I know a lot of people are using Hyperland and quite like it. I have an NVIDIA card on my home computer and it just doesn't run at all on my home machine. So how can I take a look at it if it doesn't work? And I install it. I would say every couple of months I'll install the Hyperland package on Arch and try to boot into it. And it's always the same thing. Yeah, it's a black screen with a little yellow box with some error messages and the screen's completely frozen. There's no cursor, you know, nothing to do. Uh, the keyboard doesn't work. I can't even drop to a TTY. I have to hard reset the computer. So, I mean, it's it's a broken package, right? So I, I know a lot of people want Wayland to, to actually be a thing. And Wayland kind of is a thing. I know GNOME on Wayland works really well if I wanted to be a GNOME user. I personally don't like GNOME as a desktop environment, at least not for my Myself. I know a lot of you guys love it. Uh, I'm sure I would probably feel very comfortable in a tiling window manager like Hyperland, but if it doesn't work, I can't use it. And that's really, you know, people think I have something against it because I haven't taken a look at it. Honestly, I, I want to take a look at it, but every time I install it, I, I literally have never been able to do anything on Hyperland. It just I won't even, like after installation and I log into it, it's just completely broken. So you know, I'm not going to put something like that on camera. Obviously, I'm not going to show you my struggles installing a broken package and it being com a complete train wreck. That's not fair to the Hyperland developers. I don't like doing that to any piece of free and open source software. I never show you guys things that just don't work on my equipment because, again, I think that's kind of unfair to anybody that works on free and open source software because many of these guys, of course, are freely donating their time and that's admirable you know and i never really want to throw unnecessary shade on you know these projects so as long as i'm primarily an nvidia user on my home machine which is where i spend you know 95 percent of my time on a computer as long as hyperland doesn't work on that machine uh there's just nothing I can do. Moving on to the next question. Hey DT, do you get a lot of messages that people switch to Linux because of you? I just saw the Brody podcast and Rayguard mentioned that he switched to Linux because you made a video on Kakoon four years ago. He is the dev on Factorio, the very popular game with a great Linux port. So I am familiar with Factorio. I don't think I've ever played it, but I know it's a very popular game. A lot of people play it. And it's great that the dev of Factorio uses Kakoon and he found the Kakoon text editor because I made a video about it about four years ago and that's very cool I, I'm that makes me quite happy you know I, I'm proud that so many people have found these great pieces of free and open source software maybe that they wouldn't have tried otherwise by watching you know some of my videos and you ask do I get a lot of messages from people saying that they switched to Linux because of me yeah I probably I, I would think conservatively probably tens of thousands of people have tried Linux for the very first time partly due to some of my videos. I've made 17, 1800 videos on the DistroTube channel now over the last seven years or so. These videos, I, I don't check my analytics that often, but like 70, 80 million people have watched these videos. So tens of millions of people have watched these videos. So conservatively, probably tens of thousands of people have switched to Linux because of me, maybe hundreds of thousands. I don't know. And, but, you know, whatever the number is, even if it's just one person made the switch, you know, I am I'm very happy about that. I'm very proud of the work I do, because if somebody you know, switches from Windows or Mac OS or any proprietary operating system to Linux and they like it and they enjoy it and it becomes a, a daily part of their, their workflow and their routine. Maybe in some ways, the whole idea of free and open source software ends up changing the way they view software and, and just view the world in general. You know, that makes me very happy. That's partly why I do this. So yeah, I, I get messages like this all the time. 
And the next question, hey DT, I love your work. How about you have a look at mine? So he wants me to take a look at his work. I'm assuming his YouTube channel. This is username Claude Mods, and it, you know his, his channel looks like it is a, a cool channel. It doesn't have a very big subscriber base. So you know what? I'm gonna give you a shout out right here. Guys, go check out Claude Mods. And the next question is, hey DT, what would you consider the greatest internet memes of all time? Wow, the greatest internet memes of all time. I would have to say, you know, some of the ones that immediately pop into my head because you see them all the time posted on social media, on Reddit, uh, anywhere you go, any kind of uh, messaging platform, especially where you can post images. Uh, some of the ones that come immediately to mind is the, uh, the guy pointing at his head like he has a really smart idea. And there's always funny captions to that. I think that particular uh, image came from a British documentary is, is what I think think that particular actor, I, I've never actually seen that particular documentary, but it doesn't matter what TV show that was taken from the fact that, you know, it's such a funny picture because the guy's smiling and he's pointing at his head. And, you know, that's one of the memes that immediately pop into my head. The other one that immediately pops into my head is the overly attached girlfriend. You guys have all seen the picture of the girl with the wide eyes and the, the big mouth and she's smiling and she looks creepy as hell. So that's another internet meme that obviously we all know and love, but probably my favorite meme of all time on the internet is the good old fashioned Rick Roll. I think we all can agree that's probably the best song ever made. Never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down. Moving on, this next question is kind of a lengthy question, but it's one that I can give a pretty direct answer to. He writes, hey DT or chat, when is it beneficial to reinstall versus update? For example, when Ubuntu 22.04 comes to end of life, is it that simple update or a complete reinstall? So he wants to know, should he update from 2204 to 2404 or should he just format the disk and do a fresh install of 2404 and he has a bonus question what is the command that i give let's say pacman and or apt to feed it a package list to reinstall the previous packages so the way i handle updating one major version of a distro to the next is i take the update process but i always have a backup plan i always I'm ready to do a fresh install if the update process fails in some way. So what I would do is I would go ahead and make sure you back up any important data and you go ahead and have a disk or a USB stick for Ubuntu 2404. But go ahead and try to update 2204 directly to 2404. It'll take an hour or two, you know, for that very large update. But if the update process works for you, great. If it doesn't, well, you had the backup and you had a, a USB stick with 2404 on it anyway, you were ready to go. So that's typically the way I handle that. Now you asked, how do you reinstall everything from a package list that you have saved with Pac-Man or the apt package manager? Uh, with Pac-Man, I know it because I, I, I do this all the time. W what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and grab a package list using Pac-Man dash capital Q, lowercase Q, and then direct that to the name of some file. So for example, package list.txt. And now you have a file called package list.txt that has all of the packages you have installed on your system, you know, in a file. And then you can feed that package list into Pac-Man, for example, with sudo pacman dash capital S to install packages dash. And then what you want to do is you want to direct the package list into that Pac-Man command. So you want to do the left pointing chevron and then package list.txt. I'll show the commands on screen uh, in case any of what I just said is confusing as hell. And it probably was. Next up is more questions about my hair. I don't know why you guys just don't get it, but hey DT, at what age did you start to go bald? And then a follow-up question from someone else. Hey DT, I see your hair is growing again. Nice to see that you did that hair transplantation. God bless. Okay, so first of all, DT is not bald. I think you guys know that by now. I shouldn't have to keep hammering this point home. I shave my head, right? You can see a hairline here, right? There's obviously no bald spot anywhere on DT's head. I have been shaving my head since I was uh, like 22 years old, 23 years old and in college and I just got tired of paying for haircuts. So when you're asking what age did I start shaving, you know, many, many years ago, pretty much I have never had a full 
head of hair, you know, in my adult life, you know, past the age of 22, you know, I'm in my late forties now. So I have no idea what my hair would even look like because I've always had the same haircut as an adult. So, you know, what would my hair look like? I don't know. It might be something ridiculous. It might be really curly. I know it's probably gray at this point because, you know, being a little older, when I do let it grow out, you know, if I don't shave for three or four days and, you know, I can see a little bit of hair, a lot of that hair, unfortunately, is white. So I do know I would probably have a lot of salt and pepper hair if I grew it out. I will say that as somebody who is bald by choice, the whole idea of hair transplants and hair plugs. I know a lot of people that are bald, truly bald, not like me that shaves. I know a lot of people that start going bald. A lot of men are very self-conscious about that. So they go and do that ridiculous hair plug thing, but that never looks good. You know, it's actually, it actually looks better to do exactly what I do. Shave your head. Right? This is a good look. That hair plug look, it makes you, again, it makes you look ridiculous. And as you get older, those hair plugs really look bad. If you guys have seen, well, obviously, now, President Biden, Joe Biden, you know, he is, you know, 81 years old, so he's very elderly, but you can see his head is pretty much all bald, but he's got all these hair plugs, very long hair plugs everywhere. It just looks, it's a bad look. Don't go that route. Next up is a comment. Hey DT, this is the first video I get suggested after like three months. This algorithm is killing you all. So he's talking about a new YouTube algorithm possibly that's rolled out that he's not getting my videos suggested to him as often as he used to. And you know what? I, I don't, I don't try to play the algorithm anymore. At this point, I just make the videos I, I want to make. Right? I, I don't pay attention to the algorithms. I don't pay attention to the analytics. I make the videos. If people watch, great. If, if people, for whatever reason, can't find my videos because YouTube wants to bury me in the algorithm. That's unfortunate, but you know what? I can't do anything about it. And honestly, you can't do anything as, as somebody that wants to view my content. All you can do is make sure you are subscribed, make sure you have the notification bell turned on. But even that, I know a lot of people for whatever reason, get automatically unsubscribed from channels sometimes. It's like, and I've had this happen. I've had channels I know I was subscribed to, but all of a sudden one day I'm not subscribed to them anymore. I did not subscribe from them. What the hell happened? I don't know. YouTube is a bit of a mess. And the next question is, hey DT, I want to know from where do you get your wallpapers? So where do I get my wallpapers? All kinds of places. I, I couldn't tell you where they all come from because this was not something I threw together last week or last year. Some of these wallpapers I've had for a decade or more, maybe 20 years. <laughs> I find wallpapers and I'll save them. Sometimes I find collections of wallpapers, you know, a collection of a dozen wallpapers or two dozen wallpapers, whatever it happens to be, and I'll save them. So this has been a work in progress over a number of years. I will say some of the best places to find wallpapers if you want good wallpapers especially the kinds of wallpapers i like like you know some of the uh nature uh nature scapes landscapes uh, you know pictures of animals and flowers and things like that which are typically the kind of things i like sometimes i do like abstract art as well but uh well, a great place to get wallpapers is actually 4chan has a, uh, what is it, slash WG, which is their wallpapers general <laughs> forum, if you will. And you will find some incredible wallpapers that get posted there. Another great place to find really amazing wallpapers is Imager. You know, you will find people that have their wallpaper collection on their computer that they've acquired over a number of years, like me or whoever it happens to be, and they will just share the whole thing on Imager. So really check out Imager, some other places to find great wallpapers. I, I know you used to get great images from, what is it, Unsplash, uh, Bing, the Bing search engine used to give you great wallpapers, like a daily wallpaper every day. You can find some amazing images really all over the internet. Really a simple Google search will provide you with several places to go get some amazing wallpapers. Next up, hey DT, please explain why Arch Linux is not Libre. Well, you got to understand that the Free Software Foundation has a list of what they consider fully 
free as in freedom Linux distributions or GNU slash Linux distributions in deference to the Free Software Foundation. We're going to call it GNU slash Linux today. So, you know, you cannot be a fully libre, a fully freed GNU slash Linux distribution unless you use the Linux Libre kernel. So you have to strip out all the proprietary blobs from the kernel and you have to use the Linux Libre kernel. Well, there's a problem. If you use the Linux Libre kernel, chances are that particular distribution is not going to run on 80 to 90% of the hardware out there because most computers, especially most laptops, need proprietary drivers for all the devices and the peripherals to work on that particular laptop. And desktops as well. I have an NVIDIA card on my home computer, as I mentioned earlier. You know, if you buy a really expensive NVIDIA card, you're buying it for the proprietary video drivers and the proprietary encoders, the NVENC encoders and all of that proprietary stuff and the proprietary goodness in this case that makes that card a really fantastic card. Well, you can't get a proprietary proprietary NVIDIA driver on a fully free as in freedom GNU slash Linux distribution. So there's very, very few of these FSF approved distributions that are fully free. There's only like a dozen or so that the Free Software Foundation actually endorses. Even really free as in freedom distributions like Debian. I mean, Debian calls itself Debian GNU slash Linux. And until recently, Debian did not actually have a repository of non-free software. They didn't offer any proprietary software at all in their repository here recently they've changed that a little bit but think about it debian has been around for 30 years and for and even then the free software foundation would not fully endorse debian because it used the standard linux kernel right the the non-free kernel right the real kernel instead of the linux libre kernel so unfortunately that is the reason yeah i wish the free software foundation would relax their standards a little bit or maybe uh, create more than one category have the fully free distributions the ones that are 100 percent hardcore into free software but maybe have a lesser category for uh, you know distributions that are almost free at up, they use the standard generic Linux kernel because, you know, I want my devices to work. So the next question I want to address is actually a bunch of questions. It's four different questions I pulled up and I'm going to briefly read each question and answer each question one at a time. They're all very political in nature. And that's why I kind of I'm going to group them together. Don't worry, I'm not going to go into politics as far as my own personal political beliefs or anything like that. You guys know I typically don't do that, but I get these questions all the time, these very political questions questions and I, I want to read some of these questions to you guys really just to highlight how ridiculous some of these questions are. First up, it's not a question, it's not really a comment, it's actually a demand. This guy demands that I do something. He writes, hey DT, do a video denouncing distros that proudly support domestic terrorists. So I don't even know what he's talking about here. I'm assuming he has a problem with a distribution, a Linux distribution that I took a look at on camera. Maybe the lead maintainer of that distribution has some kind of radical political ideology that he subscribes to. But this particular commenter, he doesn't subscribe to that same ideology. So, you know, he sees that other guy as, quote, proudly supporting domestic terrorism. So uh, and, and for whatever reason, you know, he has a problem with somebody else that's maintaining a Linux distribution. He's trying to drag me into it. Like, I, I don't have a problem with the guy. I don't even know the guy. Hell, I don't, really, I don't even know the distribution he's talking about because he didn't specify it. And I get these kinds of ridiculous comments all the time. You guys would be shocked how many times I get pretty much the exact same comment. It typically goes like this. Hey, DT. Why do you use ABC software when the creator of that software is such a horrible person? So basically the question uh, amounts to, hey, DT, the creator of that particular software, he belongs to a political party that I don't belong to. I belong to the other political party. So he's a horrible person and I think he's a horrible person. So you <laughs> should not use this software. Uh, again, how for one thing, how incredibly vain do you have to be to think that I care what your opinion about somebody else is and that yeah, you, whatever arguments you guys have, 
in some way it's going to affect my decision to use whatever the, whatever software I want to use, right? You know what? Go F yourself if you really think that I care. And then I got a whole bunch of comments uh, a few months back when I appeared on the Brian Lunduke podcast, and I got questions like, hey, DT, why did you appear on Brian Lunduke's show? I don't agree with his politics, so you shouldn't talk to that guy. And again, what does that have to do with me, right? Brian Lunduke is a very political person. He has certain political beliefs, a certain political ideology he subscribes to. And I know other people don't believe in the same things. You know, there's this political war going on in society. And you guys that want to fight that war, fine. I don't want to fight that war. I, I have no problems with people on either side of the political argument. So I have no problems sitting down and talking to anybody. Literally anybody. I really don't care about your politics. I didn't go to the Lunduke show to discuss politics. We didn't, you know, he didn't ask me political beliefs of mine. If he had, I would have shut it down right away. And, you know, but, and I think he knew that. So he, he, we really talked about Linux and software, right? So I have no problems talking software, especially free and open source software to anybody. And maybe it's because I'm a little older. I grew up in a different kind of era where we just didn't censor people. We didn't silence people. We didn't refuse to talk to people. You know, and no one ever refused to talk to anybody else. We all have differences. We all have different political beliefs and religious beliefs and whatever it happens to be. We're, we're all different. We're all unique people. And you know, no one's the same. As much as some people like to force ideas on people, we are not all the same. We will never all be the same. It's kind of like the whole idea of free and open source software. You know, we're, we're not all going to merge into one free and open source software project and just have, for example, the one Linux distro or the one init system. No, we have the freedom to do our own thing. And that's the same thing with just life in general. The idea that we all have to think and act the same way is asinine. So if you're a very political person, I don't care if you're a very uh, liberal slash progressive person, I'll appear on your show. Just go ahead and invite me. We can talk about whatever. I, I won't talk about politics with you, but we'll, we can talk about software. You can be a very conservative, you know, you can be a really far right kind of person. That's fine. Ask me on your show. I'll be on your show. I've got no problem talking to you either. Again, as long as we're talking about software or in, you know, non-political issues. I, I Again, I, I, I have no problem problems embracing all of humanity. Too many people are out there trying to divide us. They want to divide people into groups, right? They want to divide the liberals and the conservatives, the Democrats and the Republicans. They want to divide us by race. We got white and black and brown and yellow. They want to divide us by nationality, as you know, the borders, you know, wherever you happen to have been born, that's an identity that you're stuck with for the rest of your life. You know what? I, I don't buy into that. I don't buy into any of that political garbage and, and you're not going to ever get me to agree to any mainstream political party or their platform. I'm sorry. I'm just not going to do it. And finally, one last comment that I get this one on occasion too is, Hey DT, sometimes you take positions that make you sound very liberal, but other times you take a very conservative stance. Do you identify more closely to the Democrats or the Republicans? And obviously I'm not going to answer that question. I'm not a member of either party. I, you guys know that. I, I, I'm not one of these guys that join the team. I, I join a particular team and I got to go out and fight the other team and destroy the other team. You know, I find all of that rather repulsive. I find it rather off-putting. And I'm kind of glad that I don't have a TV, so I don't have to watch the ridiculous cable news programs that are out there like CNN and Fox News and all of that crap. I don't have a Twitter account, so I don't have to listen to all of that either. In the end, I just try to stay above all of that. You guys that want to get down in the mud and fight with each other over your political differences or what have you, you know what? I'm not going to make a judgment of moral turpitude. And if that's something you want to do, hey, go ahead. Just know that there are people out there that think you guys are some of the craziest people in the world and you are really what is holding humanity back. It's the political machine that's out there that's stirring up all the hate rather than trying to bring people together, which is what we really need more of in this world. So that's it for this edition of Hey DT. Before I go, I do want to thank a few special people. I want to thank the producers of this episode. And of course, I'm talking about Matt, James, Steve, Omar, Dragon, Dorloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Auction, Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, More, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. 
these guys. They're my high tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode of Hey DT would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. Without these guys, again, this episode would not have been possible. Do you guys want to support my work and see more videos about Linux and free and open source software? Please subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.